So you've got a new ARC carbonator. Now what? How do you operate this gorgeous Swedish gadget? How do you change the CO2 cylinder? How many pumps should I use? What does this handle thing do? How long will my CO2 cylinder last? Is this thing safe? Why does it say 60 liters on these canisters that are clearly not 60 liters? Stick around as I answer all these questions and more on how to get the most from your ARC carbonation machine. First off, the cylinder. When you open your machine, you may or may not have a CO2 cylinder included. Adding a CO2 cylinder to your ARC will usually raise the price by around $30. I like having around three of these on hand, and I'll get into why that is later. But you can order a two-pack for $60 or an extra one for around $30. You do need a standard 14.5 ounce CO2 cylinder. Sometimes this will say 400 or 425G for grams, and this is equivalent to 14.5 fluid ounces. When it's compressed like this, it is in a liquid state, and so that's what the 14.5 ounces of uh, liquid CO2 refers to. It's the weight of how much uh, CO2 is compressed in here. Now, the nice thing about our carbonators is they use this standard screw-in top. So you can buy any sand standard like SodaStream blue cylinder. Do not buy a pink quick connect cylinder. If it has a pink top, that will not work. Do not buy the pink one. SodaStream wants you to buy the pink one. Do not go for it in any case. But other models that have this more standard screw-in cylinder like this will totally work in your new ARC machine. So how do you change the CO2 cylinder? So what I like to do is I remove the drip grate, which is a piece of metal here. And if you don't, otherwise it will fall and it always falls on something just very loud. It's just, it's just nature. Um, so then I like to tip over the device and then unscrew the CO2 canister or cylinder, which is underneath. So tip it over and then lefty loosey to unscrew the cylinder like so. And to load the full cylinder, same thing, just reverse the process, slide it in there. You'll hit the end and then righty tighty and that's it. You don't need to over tighten it. Just tighten it until it stops and you'll be set. How do you use the level? So the, the level. How do you use the lever on your arc? So the lever injects CO2 into your water. Let me get a bottle here. Like so. So we have a preferably cold, flat water here. We take our PET plastic bottle and screw it into the, the device like so, righty tighty. Again, you need to have it kind of aligned. And we want to hear a burp when we we pull down the lever and it'll inject the CO2 and let's just, let me show you what it sounds like. Okay, did you hear that burp? That's when you release the lever and let the machine reset. If you wanted to add more pumps of uh, CO2 in, into the bottle to get it more sparkly, you could do another pump here. I'm just gonna leave this at one because I wanna show you the difference between one and more later. So how many pumps of the lever should you use? So to get 60 liters, it says 60 liters here, of sparkling water per cylinder, you really, really have to go very lightly when carbonating your water. So the more pulls you do into your bottle, the more CO2 you're injecting into the water, the more sparkly or bubbly it's gonna taste. So depending on the taste you're going for, you might want less pulls, you might want more. More is gonna have a little more bite to the water. I personally love three is kind of my like perfect spot of not overusing too much CO2, but also like giving it like an actual bubbly flavor. Um, certain waters and drinks are more and less carbonated than others. LaCroix, for example, is an example of a low carbonation sparkling beverage compared to say like Topo Chico, which is significantly higher in its CO2 level, gives you more of that bite or bubbles on your tongue when you're drinking it. So on our arc carbonator, I've tested this multiple times, the first pull that you do into the bottle will use around seven or eight grams of liquid CO2, and then it starts to diminish significantly after that. So the first one will use about seven to eight grams, but then each one after that uses only about four to five grams. So let's get the bottle that I did nine pulls in earlier. So this one versus the one that we just did one pull in just a few seconds ago. So let's look at nine pulls versus one pull, and we'll see if we can see any difference. I'm not sure if we actually are, but I know I'm gonna be able to taste the distance, so I'm excited about this. Okay, one pull, nine pulls. I have two glasses. 
They're both just at room temperature here. And let's see if this will work. Let me think of the best way to show this. Okay, let's do, let's do the one, one pull first. And we'll just show that. Fill it up to about there. Now this is the nine. You can see some bubbles there. For, ooh, I mean, you can just hear the difference there. And let's pour in that. Significantly more bubbles for sure. Continuing to bubble. I mean, yeah, so again, this was nine pulls, almost 40 grams of liquid CO2 that, that went in here. This is continuing to bubble. So this really shows you the difference of going between, you know, nine pulls, one pull. So yes, you'll get potentially 60 liters if you just have your water like this, which it tastes great. I mean, it, it's, it's not flat water by any means. It's delicious, don't get me wrong. That is very carbonated. I just, ooh, you like instantly feel it on your tongue. Yeah, that's, <laughs> excuse me. That's, that's very bubbly. So you can safely do nine poles. I just, I don't know if you're gonna want your water that bubbly. So that's the comparison of, of how many poles you can do in your machine. I just wanted to show you the, the difference of what the water looks like and what it tastes like. So I think you'll, you'll find probably two to three is, is a good amount if you're drinking this pretty consistently. So how long will your CO2 cylinder last? So if you get a new bottle or if you refilled one, a new bottle is gonna have around 410 grams of liquid CO2, 14.5 liquid fluid ounces. And each pull is using, you know, on the low end, seven grams on the first pull. And that's how you could get to 70 liters. If you just did one pull, you could probably eke out 60, excuse me, 60 liters from one thing, but you'd have a very, 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 and that's heavily carbonated, very lightly carbonated best beverage. So again, I like three pulls on the, on the arc, but play around with it, see what you like. Maybe you just like the one, it's still delicious. But if you're doing three pulls on each one, you're only gonna get, you know, around 22 liters from one of these cylinders. So your cylinder is gonna last a lot longer with a single pull, and it's gonna, you're gonna go through it much faster with more pulls into each one liter bottle. So a full cylinder, when you weigh it, if you have a food scale here, is gonna be around 1100 to 1150 grams. And these empty ones are about 750 grams totally empty. And when your cylinder is getting empty, you'll notice it's taking longer to get to the burp noise, you know, and you'll see less gas going into the bottle. So just, you might need to do seven or eight pulls to kind of get the last little bit out of the canister. So it'll be pretty obvious when you're starting to run out of CO2. If you have a food scale, a really easy way to, to check is, hey, am I under 800 grams? This thing's getting low and you'll you'll start to notice it's taking more pulls to get to a similar carbonation level All right so is this thing safe yes using a home co2 machine is very safe you know when you're handling these bottles full you should should be careful they do have a pressure release button right here they're not going to fly around the room they're not going to explode but you should take care you don't want to knock this off you wouldn't want a bunch of co2 just going into an open area or an enclosed area. If that did happen, just make sure you get to fresh air quickly. Uh, you don't need to worry about these smaller uh, canisters as much as you do, say, like, I don't know, something like this. This you need to be more careful with. This has a collar on it. This is a 20 pound CO2 tank. So that you do need to be more careful with and keep that stored in a safe location and take other precautions. But these ones are very safe. And if you do happen to drop one, Again, they have the safety release valve. You store them in a safe, dry, temperature appropriate location, but don't worry too much about is this safe to do or not. Reasonable precautions and you will be fine. So go to your heart's content making that bubbly water. Can I use a glass bottle in the ARC carbonator? No. If you have a glass ARC Pro bottle, those can only be used in the carbonator Pro. Excuse me, I still have a lot of bubbles from that nine pole bubbly water. But yes, the carbonator three like this, it has an open area where you refill and carbonate the beverage. So you cannot use a glass bottle. If you have a glass bottle that has to be covered during the carbonation process. 
So the Carbonator Pro covers the bottle during the carbonation process, which is why you can use a glass bottle. But for any of the non-pro arc carbonators, you cannot use a glass bottle. You need to use just a standard PET plastic bottle like this, or the ones from SodaStream will work as well. Do you have to use arc branded CO2 cylinders? No, you do not. Any standard screw in CO2 cylinder, such as this one from SodaStream, again, only the blue SodaStream ones, or cylinders from Soda Magic or Simply Soda, any of those ones will work in your arc. So don't feel the need to buy the arc branded ones. I think they look nice, but any standard screw in cylinder like this will work just fine. How do you refill your CO2 cylinders? Okay. So here we're getting to the magic of owning a CO2 machine. If you don't want to pay $15 or more per bottle refill, you can actually easily refill these cylinders from a larger 20 pound or 10 pound or five pound CO2 tank. Like I showed earlier, you can get a few parts from Amazon and you'll never have to worry about shipping these cylinders or buying new ones again. So if that sounds interesting to you, I have a longer video on step-by-step -step process of how to do that. Check out the video here and watch that if you want to see how to safely and very cheaply refill these cylinders for a dollar or two, not $15 from a larger tank. So check that out now and thanks for watching.